Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Uh, and Better late than never. Well, that's true. That's true. I mean, we are here. Hello, Vincent. Hello, Stephen, Tina. Nice to see you both. How are things in Colorado? <clears throat> They're good. It's um, We've gotten some snow. It's a little cold outside. And um, I'm looking forward to the... I'm thinking about getting up very early to go um, up in the foothills and watch the, the moon come up in the morning. It's supposed to be really remarkable. It's going to be like an eclipse and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, things are going well. Yeah, well, uh, good. Because th three hours ago, we had a show put together. Uh, you and I worked hard <laughs> um, getting the, the pictures and the story. Uh -huh. And they're not with us in on Be Live. So we're actually going to busk it today. We're going to talk about everything and anything. We can, Tina can see the comments, uh, which is brilliant. <laughs> if you are watching the show, we're going to go in the old time on fashion. Tell us where you are. Uh, it's all right. I did a webinar this morning. I did a pretend webinar. And of course, one of the first questions you ask on a webinar is, where are you from? Um, so I'm going to ask that now in every live that I do and annoy people. Hey, David. <laughs> David's in Canada. Look at that. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's David Burroughs. Is that? Uh -huh. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, David. Yes. Hello, David. Uh, we were supposed to be on live stream today. We aren't, as you can see. Um, best laid plans of mice and men, gang and glay. Um, and we're looking for topics. So if you've any ideas what we can talk about, then just put them in, and we'll go for it. And we'll talk about anything of interest, uh, apart from. Well, here's a here's a good topic. Has anybody okay. else had problems with live stream today? <laughs> well, that yeah, I mean, the, 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 David had it running smoothly yesterday. It ran smoothly at two o'clock, but I didn't. As soon as I went to invite you both as guests, this it, is great. So, uh, Cindy, speaking of topics, that's Cindy uh, Emma Marie. I know that um, we've had Emma Marie on the show before. Yeah. Uh, that would be a great. You know, talking about music would be an incredible topic. Never, it never goes out of style. And we have someone from North Carolina. So uh -huh. I don't know your name, but <laughs> have you we guys should heard know of, the name. Have you heard of the X Games that happen up in uh, Aspen, Colorado? Yes. X Games. Cindy and Emma and family, Mia and their uh, Emma's dad Brian were up there because Brian works up there during the games for Comcast. So they got to hang out in the mountains of Aspen over the weekend. Oh, wow. Cool. They took a train ride up there, which is incredibly scenic, hanging out in the train, going up. Um, a lot less stressful than driving I-70 up to the, the mountains, for sure. So hi, Cindy. Hi, Emma. Mia might be watching as well. Jason? Yeah. Hello, everyone. I, if I seem distracted, I am. <laughs> I'm trying <laughs> to put together an, an album so we can bring some images in. Um, for Vincent to talk about in a little bit. That was part of the plan. And as Stephen said, best laid plans. <laughs> Did it work out? So we're starting from scratch here. So if I look, mm -hmm. I probably always look distracted because I'm always <laughs> distracted. There should be nothing new. <laughs> yeah, this is exciting for me. I haven't been on live stream in, in a while. I took a little break. Yeah. And, you know, I've used um, uh, be live, which is great, and also um, light stream as well. We actually, Stephen, you and I had an online chat with Stu. We did, we did, and uh, that was a very good chat. And uh, I might be having an online chat with Stu later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, indeed, indeed. I have so, the photos ready, so in, whenever you guys are ready, then okay. thank you for that. So the email yeah. that that worked out, sending you the email. Oh, great. Okay. Yep. So I can put myself in the lobby and bring the photos up whenever you're ready. You just have to remember to prompt me to go to the next picture. <laughs> right. Ah, right. Okay. <laughs> well, the, the first one you want to bring up is the gray one. The gray one? Yeah. Black you and know, white. While you're doing that, let me, let me take 30 seconds. I need to refill my water here. Um, I'll be right back. You get to look at my, my blank wall for a second. <laughs> Well, you get to look at his beautiful microphone that he made sure was displayed today. <laughs> so the black and white picture. Yeah, I think so. That's well. Yeah. It looks like the oldest photograph. And, right. Uh, 
Actually, 20 seconds. So that wasn't too bad. That's nice. pretty good. <laughs> you got to look at my groovy um, snowball microphone, which I'm hanging up here for the first time. So, um, yeah. Right. So we have the photographs. And we've established so far that you are Vincent Burkhart. You're based in Colorado. And this photograph, can you tell us about it? Wow, well, what an iconic photograph that is. Um, I've had the pleasure to speak online with Don Grierson, the gentleman on the right. This picture was taken, I'm guessing, the mid-70s, I believe. Don is a legendary promoter, from Aust originally from Australia. Worked his way up, um, bought a one-way ticket, coming over to the U.S. Uh, when he was, I think, 21. And that's Joe Cocker. Uh, we had a recent online talk um and uh -huh. one of uh, i had some ramp artists including emma marie on the call with him and he 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 mentioned that joe cocker was his if he had to pick a favorite he worked with many many different artists yeah um that joe was the most unique um in many ways and the, really the most honest uh, just really enjoyed working with joe so that's pretty iconic yeah. picture, right? There. Yeah. Well, the, the iconic record is with a little help from my friends, isn't it? Which... Yes. Yes, it is. Um, the, the Beatles song, of course. Um, what an original guy. He played Woodstock. Um, yeah. He passed on a few years ago. Um, but yeah, what a, what a genuine guy. It was really enlightening, for, I think, for all of us on that talk because Don talked about being unique and finding your uniqueness and in, in, in what you do as a performer. So it was really cool. It was really cool. That's, that, that's why I picked that picture. Where should we go next? Mm. I could give a brief overview of ramp if you like for those. Oh, that yeah. Familiar. That's, that's a good place to start. Mm. Good place to start. Um, page one, chapter one. No, um, uh, <laughs> I, I work with youth musicians in Colorado and also um, I do some connecting internationally in London and um, Canada, hopefully, and Australia. And I um, have some youth that I give performance opportunities to, and that's my logo there. Um, started out doing radio work and got into local um, school television cable station. And now I have um, just different ways that I approach working with youth musicians and helping them out with um, different things, I guess you could say. Yeah, so that's an overview. Right, okay, now, the artists that you're actually working with include these two young ladies. Um, and that's a hint to Tina, the next picture up should uh, be- Yes, cue next picture, please. Uh, the, two, the two gals, Jackie and Kiana, there they are. And that's Ashley on the right. So um, KRSC, kind of where I began my broadcasting work and working with the youth musicians, that's the redesigned and brand new studio. Um, and so we were asked to have on musicians, which was great. So I brought on Kiana on the left and her, one of her best friends, Jackie, in the middle. Jackie's sister, Ashley, on the right there. Um, oh, Emma Marie. Yeah, Vincent connected me with Lucy Gowan from London. Yeah, that was pretty incredible. Um, we ended up being featured on a television show in London last year. Great experience. Thanks, yeah. Vincent. Yeah, and, and Emma, I have to thank you as well because um, because of how well she did as a musician and just connecting with Lucy, that really made that happen. And actually, Emma uh, introduced me to um, Jackie and Kiana. So the, they're all really, really good friends. Emma ended up um, being invited to be on Little Big Shots in the UK for their first season. Um, I connected her online with Lucy Gowan, who was a wonderful guitar player in London. They were both nine or 10 at the time. time mm -hmm. And we ended up doing a music video uh, from the song Sweet Child of Mine. Uh, we actually pre first did a recording of Emma singing vocals here, Lucy playing guitar in London with a, a cool backing track. And then we were able to combine 
the audio files to make it a connected song, even though they hadn't met and lived 5,000 miles apart. So they used that track, um, that video as part of their submission to Little Big Shots. Okay. Yep. And they ended up meeting in person, um, which is really wow. pretty incredible. Probably the coolest thing I've, I've done up to this point, being a part of that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and, and they're still a good friend. They just released their sixth video together. Um, I was involved in the first two videos that they worked together on, but they just released um, Wanted Dead or Alive, Bon Jovi uh -huh. song. And that's on uh, Emma's, I have to give out a website, emmamariemusic.net. Um, and Emma's 13 now, very professional, incredible um, talent, just really, really talented. So that's, uh, yeah, six collaborations to date. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. I'm a connector. I mean, I think that if you ask people, that's really a fun thing for me to do, whether it's in town, introducing um, musicians and their families that um, are looking for collaborations, um, connecting them with venues. Um, and I, I think, Stephen, as you know, the power of the Internet, oh, yeah. uh, being able to connect. You're living 20 miles from Stonehenge. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm living in uh, Northern Colorado. Um, how many miles away is that? 50, is it? I think it's about, yeah, it's about 5,000 miles. It is, uh, it is. I did some searching online uh, starting a few years back to connect the musicians here internationally because it just seems like a really cool thing to be able to do. It's like a 21st century musical pen pal, right? Yep, yeah. And I mean, we are looking for the platform on which they can perform live, aren't we? To be able to have artists performing live uh, around set around a discussion show. Do you think that idea would will come? You know, we talked to Stu about that from Lightstream, um, and there's still a little bit of a lag. I think that if the lag was consistent, and I still haven't tried this, just the timing hasn't been there. But if you had, let's say, Lucy in london with a very good signal of course and that's part of it too because if you're a musician you want people to hear you at your best you that's don't true. want a signal that goes out you don't want a muted you know you want to sound good i think that I, th I do think that it would work if you have a really good signal in fact i was speaking with mark uh gowan in london uh mm -hmm. lucy gowan's dad and they just like two weeks ago, went from having some of the worst internet signal you can imagine to the best in all of pretty much the UK. His signal, he told me what the speed was and it blows mine out of the water. And I thought I had a pretty good signal. So that's very yeah. exciting because I think that with a really good signal, um, there's definitely um, the opportunity to, to try that where you could hypothetically, uh, hopefully really have musicians performing live online um, and there would not be, because if her lag, if there was a lag time, let's just say, for example, Emma Marie is singing along Colorado here, along to Lucy playing live in London. If Lucy's signal had a, a lag time, but it was the same lag time, and Emma was able to sing along with that, yep. if people, if a third party is like watching that, I don't, honestly, Stephen, at this point, know quite how that would come across. I, I don't know. Well, it's a question of experimenting, isn't it? And working with it with uh, the company involved to, to make it work before you actually go public. Um, and if everybody's got decent internet, uh, then there's a possibility it could, it could work and you could have people jamming around the world in a live show on Facebook. And that would be, you know, magical, wouldn't it? I think it would. I think it'd be really cool. I mean, this whole thing, just us having this talk is pretty magical in and of itself, you know, it's yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah. And I think the concept of, of, you know, the program, the ramp program, Stephen, is to always try new stuff. Mm. I mean, that's yeah. always been, if an idea comes up, let's try it. Right. Right. It's the whole pivot aspect of being an entrepreneur. Uh, indeed. Indeed. Now, Jackie and Kiana, who you're working with at the moment. Mm -hmm. I hope I pronounced that right. You are indeed. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. what are you doing for what are you doing with them to promote, help educate them and, and promote their careers? Mm-hmm. It's interesting. They're um 
um, in comparison, MMRI has been doing this for a few years now. She's written over 30 songs. She's performed in front of 10,000 people. She's been on this uh, Little Big Shots UK. Yeah. They look to her um, as a mentor. Emma's 13, they're both 14. And it's really nice to have Emma a close friend of theirs. So they can learn, I think, a lot from Emma just by talking to her, by watching her perform. I'm giving them some varied performance opportunities, um, talking to them about aspects of performance, mm -hmm. um, promoting them online in my small way, giving them um, interview opportunities where they're talking about themselves as artists, and then I can record that and, and put that online. Um, along with Emma Marie, she, they both were involved in the talk with Don Grierson, the gentleman that you showed earlier. <clears throat> they were able to um, ask me questions. In fact, Jackie's question was, who was your favorite performer to work with? Yeah. Um, and Kiana said, I was just about to ask that. Um, <laughs> So being able to actually talk to somebody who literally is a legend in the industry for uh, you know 45 minutes is pretty darn cool. Um, helping them, Jackie's got a new song coming out. Her first recorded song is really phenomenal. It's called La La Land. And mm -hmm. she went through a site called Itty Ditty. I introduced them to Itty Ditty, although Emma Marie knew about that before I did. And then I transferred that information over to uh, Jackie. Jackie, where you have this is a new concept. This is groundbreaking, really. Um, Emily Satterley is the person heading up Itty Ditty, where let's say you have a rough track, you're singing and you play guitar. Yeah. You put it on this website. It's if you put it on this website where multiple producers can listen to that and come up with their their idea of how that song should sound based upon the parameters that the artist says. So in Jackie's case, <clears throat> oh, I really like the, w listen to this song on YouTube. Like, I really like how that bass sounds. And I want it to sound kind of raw and organic. Um, you know, I, I like strings as well, string instruments, something like that. And then these producers in their studio, they take that information and they make their version of the song. And then, in Jackie's case, she had 10 producers submit their version yes. of that song. And every producer sounds different. You know, this is something yes. that I'm learning is you don't just go to a producer and it turns out. It's like, no, there's based upon what their thoughts are of the song and how they work. So then she got to choose which producer that she wanted. Wow. There's a very vicious sounding, very small dog in the background. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it, it's really groundbreaking, Stephen. I, I was I was really impressed and continue to be impressed with how this happened. So Emma's used the site for two songs. And um, so Jackie used that song um, for La La Land. And it, it's it's just about done. They're, they're just about done with that. So when that comes out, and actually... <clears throat> Jackie's dad and sister also submitted songs to this as well. Uh huh. All right. So it's a family affair. <clears throat> Her dad, Frank, um, had always wanted to be a musician. Um, and he's very talented. He sounds like, who is the gentleman he sounds like? Um, I won't sing it for okay. you, but he, he's, he's fantastic. Very modest. But um, yeah, family affair going on there. Um, so when that song does get released, um, you know, we're going to work together to try to see what we can do do with that. And um, I'm getting an animation, which is an area that I'm going to, to want to use, use for that. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you're actually learning animation at the moment. Learning animation. Um, I've been drawing and painting for a little while, and I've gotten some pretty nice feedback from folks. So it's given me some confidence to um, continue with that. And something that Don brought up, you know, as talented as Emma Marie is and, and Jackie and Kiana, there, there's a lot of talent out there. And I think that, um, I mean, when you think about Emma Marie, she's, she's, she's doing phenomenal things and she's work, continuing to work with Lucy, <clears throat> really getting noticed, I think, by um, some people and so forth. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, what I can do 
is only so much in certain realms. I mean, I can, can try to connect them overseas. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've decided that um, based upon, you know, Don talking about the real need for being unique. Yes. Doing something nobody else is doing, um, at least in Colorado, I want to learn to animate the the music scene and so um you know having jackie and kiana as characters <laughs> okay. in this animation animating um and there's a lot of different types of animation so it's a pretty big learning curve for me um but i'm i'm spending multiple hours every day um you know learning about this and and how i can incorporate it into uh, in a ramp so that would be animated music videos. And you mm. mentioned also earlier when we were chatting a, a fictional series that uh, you and Don have been talking about. Um, yeah, I haven't talked to Don really about that right, okay. bit. Um, I kind of had this revelation after our last uh, internet talk with all of the musicians that this is something I really want to try. Um, it's It can be rather time consuming, so I, I, I want to get ideas from Jackie and Kiana as well, as far as, um, but I do want to um, make an ongoing series of some type that um, has a bit of irreverence, a lot of humor, um, focusing on uh, the power of music. You know, it could take place in the near future. It might take, part of it might take place in the rings of Saturn. I mean, I think that I really want to make it visually kind of unique and some of that could incorporate um, some pretty surreal backdrops. Let's just put it that way. You know, because I was thinking about making it take place in downtown Fort Collins at the downtown artery. And yeah, that would be interesting. But I think that beyond the local scene, people would look at that and say, OK, well, you know, it's the inside of a building or whatever, um, as nice as that building is. But if I made it you know, kind of unpredictable. Mm -hmm. I think it could hold more interest for people um, that watch it. Right, now, uh, that brings us on to a uh, lady who's got, well, Daniel Anderson um, of mm -hmm. Daniel Ate the Sandwich, which you've got, you've got to explain mm -hmm. two things there. One, why the title, and, and two, your <laughs> connection. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. You know, she talked about, I don't remember exactly how that came up. I think she is just, um, she's got a great wit and a great sense of humor. So somehow that just, it is perplexing to people like, wow, what, a, where did that come from? And I think it's just part of her humor. Uh, yeah. I think if you look at the um, singer songwriters that have come out of Northern Colorado, um, she's done very, very well. Um, She's a full-time musician. Mm -hmm. Her and her ukulele, or ukulele, I think is the correct pronunciation. She does sometimes play with a really terrific backing band with like a violin, stand-up bass. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't think there's a drummer. But she um, she's a wonderful soul, and she's really unique in her YouTube marketing and so forth. And... Um, I remember the first time I ever heard her, I walked into the radio station KRFC and they were having Live at Lunch on, which is the show um, that's coming up. There's There she is on Ukulele Magazine, Ukulele Magazine. And she um, let me bring a couple musicians in to work with her for okay. consecutive Sundays for a couple hours. And they were really affected. It was um, Jackie and John Vigoron, another artist, and they uh, ended up writing a song together, which they didn't. 100% complete, but it, <clears throat> it was really a wonderful experience for them. And um, she's thinking about getting more into that. She's kind of exploring um, mentoring um, youth musicians because she, she'd be phenomenal at it. She was phenomenal at it. They were, they were really affected by spending time with her. It was very inspiring. And that basically bringing people together is part of ramp isn't it it's bringing artists together to, to actually talk to each other and learn from each other it really is it really is yeah and um john v and jackie hadn't spent time before that and certainly they hadn't spent four hours hanging out with danielle um 
So that was that was wonderful um, to be able to do this. This is great, by the way. Thank you again for the invite, being here on the live stream. It's been a while. We haven't connected in a while. We've been kind of doing our other stuff. We have. We have indeed. And uh, it's good to get back together and to catch up uh, with what's actually happening. Uh, because, I mean, you, you are involved with a, with a wide range of artists around the globe. I mean, I know you're based in NC, but you are sorry, North, in Colorado. Mm -hmm. But your reach goes far beyond that. Yeah. And, you know, it's sort of like planting seeds where, um, like Mr. Johnny Appleseed, right? You kind of plant the seeds. And hello, Fernando. Where's yeah. Fernando from? I can't recognize the name, but it's been. Hello, Fernando. Um, yeah, so some projects are sort of, we, I, I keep certain connections, although, um, you know, like, for example, in, in Australia, um, there's um, um, some folks, Amber was in the talk with Don Grierson, and I haven't worked directly with Amber in about three years. She was on, actually, it's right here. She was on the CD that I um, coordinated that had yep. um, original songs by youth artists and she contributed a vocal track. So it was an international CD, which is really cool. Um, Cersei is um, also in Australia, um, quite a bit younger. I think she's 11 uh -huh. from California. Very nice. Um, yeah. So, Cersei um, is, is in Melbourne. I beg your pardon? Cersei is in, based in Melbourne. Cersei is in Ballarat, which is um, about 50 miles northwest of their hugely historic town. Um, just, I, that yeah. could be a whole show talking about the incredible things happening in there. Uh, um, very true. I could actually join in on that because I, I've been fortunate to be, I've been there twice. You've been to Ballarat? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's such wow. a small world now. Uh, I've been to Ballarat, uh, to the town and to the, uh, the Ballarat mines. And uh -huh. it's quite an experience to go there. Uh, and, you know, Cersei is lucky to be there, I think. Well, yeah. Um, that's incredible. Wow. Yeah. Didn't know you did. So, so the, to put it in perspective, um, it was a very large, um, gold mining town. Well, the, mm. the, the, yeah. the production that, that came out of there was, I looked into this and there's a lot of different gold mining towns in Colorado. Yeah. Um, the number one gold mining town in the whole state, um, I think it's Central City, um, mm -hmm. almost to the, to, the, to the ounce, well, not to the ounce, is the same as Ballarat. Right. Put that in perspective. Okay, yeah. So the greatest gold mining area in, Fort, in Colorado is the same as Ballarat. And there's some just incredible stories that that have come out of that um, that that I kind of started to follow, and then I tied Cersei into that, and um, so that was pretty interesting um, to to be able to do that. Mm. That was so she became um, my first international junior broadcaster. She's my only international junior broadcaster at this point, but I trained her a little bit on interviewing techniques and I set her up with somebody to interview out there and then that her family became friends with this other family even though they lived in the same town they had never met and this lady Lorraine Branch is a great great granddaughter of a hugely um, influential um, inventor mm -hmm. that was one of the sons of a family that came out of that gold mine boom gold mining boom so it's a really interesting story there's a really neat building did you go to sutton salsa music i wonder if it was actually open when you were there uh it might have been i, I don't remember going there so yeah. it may or may not have been i don't know um yeah, yeah. we we were based in melbourne and went out to ballarat uh nice. it is i mean it is an amazing place and it is on the tourist route mm -hmm. the, the drive through uh through that part of australia um yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, the thing is that the, the video brings everybody together and you can easy, as easy talk to us, someone in Australia as you can to somebody in North Carolina. And, you know, it, the internet has shrunk everything so that we can talk to uh, and interact with people around the globe. Now, one thing I'm interested in is an upcoming university gig. 
Mm, yeah. yeah we've yeah, got I'm the really arena. Excited about that. I'm really excited right. about that. There we go. Yeah, that's on the Colorado State University campus, holds 250 students. Um, Emma has actually partaken in this twice previously, um, and hopefully will again this semester. Um, so there's a much belo beloved um, university professor. Her name is um, Denise Apodaca, and she teaches music appreciation. So she will have um, you know a lecture, a slideshow talking about um, the different um, elements of popular music throughout the mm -hmm. ages. <clears throat> really, really fascinating. And she will have some of her students, like at the uh, end of a class, I don't think every class this happens, but she'll set aside a certain amount of time for musicians to perform um, from the class. So she's extended that offer to, to the RAMP program. So I've had Emma on there a, a couple of times. That was really fun. Um, and so this time I'm having Jackie and Kiana come in on February 22nd. So they'll have time for like three or four songs. I'll spend a couple minutes up there talking about ramp a little bit. I'm sure I'll mention your name. So, um, you know, just about the live streaming aspect, which yeah. is super cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's been a big deal connecting with you. I mean, it really has. And, um, you know, you're the, um, you know, definitely one of the leaders in the, the, the live streaming community. And you've been very gracious to, to have me on previously and talk about RAMP and like, it's been really helpful to be part I, of I, I enjoy chatting together. We both enjoy exploring new avenues and uh, certainly live video is the most happening thing around at the moment. It is bringing people together. Now, uh, Clarissa. Uh, Let's talk Clarissa. about Clarissa for a moment. Super cool. Um, so we, we mentioned Lucy Gowan, still working with Emma Marie. Yeah. Um, a really good friend of Lucy in London is Clarissa. So through Lucy, I got to meet um, online Clarissa and her dad, Chris. And there's a very uh, prominent competition in London each year called Busk in London. Mm -hmm. All right. A couple thousand, a few thousand people try out for that. They choose a couple hundred. And um, this past year, Lucy Gowan came in the top three, which is a huge accomplishment, wow. huge accomplishment. So the year before, and, and Lucy, by the way, at the age of 13, doing that quite impressive at any age. Um, this past two years ago, the year before, at the age of 13, the overall winner of the whole enchilada was um, Clarissa. So really fascinating, and you, you can see why. I mean, she's got um, very, very talented, really talented. So um, in speaking with her and her dad, and me trying to connect Jackie and Kiana to cool opportunities, um, they met online uh, on the Zoom application, and they're going right. to uh, do some songwriting together online. So it's a phenomenal opportunity for um, Kiana and Jackie to be able to yeah. connect with Clarissa. Um, I don't have a picture of Clarissa, Clarissa here, but a really interesting history with her too. Culturally, she's, uh, her heritage is Filipino. So mm -hmm. um, that has actually led to um, a really, really interesting opportunity that I can't actually discuss at this point. It's kind of, um, but it's it's an incredible opportunity that came up due to um, an, um, just a connection that her her dad had. Um, so yeah, so to be able to to be able to um, connect uh, with London, I mean, really, what could possibly be a more interesting city to connect with in London? I, I can't think of one. I have to agree with you on that. <laughs> it's the center of the world in in a lot of ways, a lot of ways, certainly. Uh, it plays a big part. Now, uh, also, uh, you working with Sherry Lampires? Sherry Lampires. Lampires, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sherry's a great friend. Uh, we've known each other for a number of years, and she's a tremendous voice coach. Um, okay. Really, and it's sort of the thing. I took a couple voice lessons from her. I had some things upcoming that I was going to be singing in front of people, and I, I wanted to sound um amenable to the ears and so uh, it's amazing how much Stephen 
there is about voice that it's sort of like you don't know what you don't know until you actually okay. get involved in it. And there's a lot wow. of different styles of singing and the fact. So Sherry's able to do that. She's very knowledgeable about these things and teaches uh, piano as well. So we're going to do a, a potentially ongoing. We're going to have the first one coming up in about a month, bringing musicians together that haven't met before. Kiana and Jackie will be there um, meeting um, some musicians that they have not met before for friendship, possible collaboration, and talking about um, something that is not really taught, um, even at a place like Berkeley School of Music, is my understanding, mm -hmm. um, about entertainment concepts. Okay. Because you can be the best musician on a guitar, you can um, have all the confidence in the world, but the ability to connect with the audience, um, and right. actually Emma Marie, Emma Marie does this extremely well, which is, yeah. I don't know if they're still watching. And if you are still watching Emma, um, there was a link earlier, if you wanted to actually come on and talk to everybody and talk about Lucy Gallon, your brand new song that's coming out, that came out, a few different songs. She's got original, she's got, um, yeah, so there's the link if you guys are still watching. They may not, I'm not sure if she's doing schoolwork right now. Um, so the idea of that really important aspect, which is not really taught, we're going to explore that and talk a little bit about it. And it's something that is hugely important to, um, you know, to be a performer. And as a youth performer, Stephen, it, it transfers into um, everything you do. Indeed. I mean, we, we it presents. Oh, great. She'll be on in a few minutes. It's fantastic. Okay, brilliant. We got, we're going to be talking a little longer, right? We've got more time, yeah. right? Yeah, we've got we've got time. We're within the quarter now. We're good. Um, yeah, I mean, presence, having a presence, and, and I mean, I I did a, a just a, an observation the other day that I know a lot of brilliant broadcasters who can actually leap out of any uh, show that they're doing and grab you by and you're drawn in. Yeah, they have the ability to reach beyond the screen and draw you into their world and you're absorbed by it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. It's a, it's, a, it's a presence thing, you know, and it, and it doesn't mean that you're going to be shouting and jumping up and down in your chair and and and, you know, um, just being able to actually connect with people. It's, it's pr pretty phenomenal. So, Vincent, before um, 18. Hi. <laughs> hi. So before Emma comes on, um, can you tell if there are any young people out there watching that are interested in connecting with you to learn more? Let me make sure we tell people how they can find you. Well, that's nice of you. Um, I have a website. Uh, it does need a little updating, but um, ramp.guru. Guru is actually a, a domain like .com. It's G-U-R-U. So ramp. R A M P dot G U R U. Um, I believe my website, I believe my email is on there. Um, I'm pretty sure it's on there. And I'm on Facebook, uh, Vincent Burkhart. I don't have a, my Facebook page. Yeah, thank you. My Facebook page is just my name. Um, I tried having a ramp website, but you can't do certain things with those types of websites. So I, I, I stopped doing that. But, um, yeah, I have some I have some pretty big ongoing plans. I mean, you know, being able to learn from Don Gerson, legend in the industry, to be able to work with a level of talent that is here in northern Colorado, plus, you know, London and Australia, it's it's quite exciting. You know, it, it really is. Um, I'm really focused on Jackie and Kiana right now and uh -huh. seeing what we can accomplish in 2018. Um but I, I do reach out, you know, to other musicians that I come across and uh, online and so forth and, and their families. And you, you never know who's out there and it might want to connect and do something really interesting. Very true. Tina, if you if thank you for hosting the show and rescuing yeah. what was a disaster. <laughs> And, I'm not uh, sure I did very well with keeping up the photos oh, no, that went no. with what you were talking about. <laughs> it, 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 I didn't when, really cue you either, so that wasn't, I didn't really do that. So. It is, it's going very smoothly. If you want to drop me down, stay in the show and bring Emma up, that would be good. What do you think? Whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah, I, sure. 
I usually talk too much, so I mean, it's nice what to have that? me off. No screen. problem with that. <laughs> okay. And while you do that, I'm going to take another 20 seconds. I'm really dehydrated, so I'm going to I'm going to grab some more water. I'll be back. So that that's the you know that's one of the great things about live is you do whatever you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> true. True. Yeah. I've had to stop and throw things at my husband because he was being too loud playing a video game. So you never know. <laughs> Just be really close to your water source. <laughs> didn't he hear you. Didn't hear yeah, you. I said you must be really close to your water source. I am. It's it's like right over there. <laughs> yeah, It'll take me a little Eternal longer. Eternal spring. I just I get a little choked up sometimes. It's it's just from being excited by being online. I think. <laughs> yeah, I I just have coffee. I'm dehydrating mm -hmm. myself. <laughs> yeah, I was drinking that earlier. That's why I think why I need the the water now. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, if you could give. If, so if you don't have the time, so it may not be necessarily that you're not interested in working with someone, but as a one man band, <laughs> you can only work with so many people and give them the attention they need. So if there's someone that needs help and they can't collaborate with you for some reason or you're too booked up, what would be the one piece of advice that you would give them that might help them? No pressure. Great question. <laughs> question. Well, you know, there's actually a book that I think is worth its weight in in, this in gold. Um, there's a instrumentalist called Mindy A. Bear, M I N D I, A Bear A B A I R, and she has a book that is incredible. You can get it on Kindle or physical copy. It's called How to Play Madison Square Garden, and it. It's, its intent is not for you literally to play Madison Square Garden, but it's about the entertainment concepts that we alluded to. Um, she gives a lot of real life examples, and it's not a name dropping sort of book, but she gives a lot of examples about things that have worked and maybe things that haven't worked um, that musicians do. And there are certain techniques that you, anybody can learn that the people that are really working it they know these techniques because they're doing them. And um, that is the one thing I think that um, would be wonderful because if you're getting great gigs and you've got great songs, but you're not connecting when you're on stage, connecting with an audience live is the number one thing, in my opinion. And, and that Don Grierson would tell you the same thing um, that people can do. And you look at someone like Emma Marie, um, she does that. At the age of 13, she can do that. And it's funny because I'm kind of at a point where I don't even mention her name or say youth artist. She's an artist. <laughs> um, and this is something that I'm really working with Jack and Kiana as well and some of the others where um, these are learnable techniques. So, yeah, being able to connect with an, an audience in a way that's, that's distinctly you is where it's at. Yeah, and this is interesting to me because you work with young artists and they're growing up in a digital age. And so their exposure to people is far less one-to-one -one than it used to be. It's mm -hmm. more done through technology. And even uh -huh. with their peers, you know, we used to do sleepovers. Now they do Snapchat groups. <laughs> and, you know, they're still together and they still used to see each other, but they're not physically in the room together. And I wonder if that affects their ability to connect when they're live and in person. Because uh, it is different. For, you know, if I'm speaking and I mm -hmm. happen to like public speaking, but there are a lot of people who can come on and do a live show like this and they're comfortable. But if you put them in front of 300 students at, you know, Colorado University, they have stage fright and it's a completely different experience. So I wonder if the fact that we're becoming so connected digitally, mm -hmm. less human to human, if that affects the ability to perform and connect That's a great, with your audience. It's a great That's point. That's a psychology thing. <laughs> That's a great point. Well, you know, it's interesting because something that Emma and Jackie and Keanu all have in common is a love of the theater. I always have to say theater. Um, yes, you do. And that, oh my gosh. I mean, when it comes to performing music, the things that they learn in theater are so transferable. 
I mean, it takes them like up a few notches, the fact that they're involved in theater um, and tied into that too, because the number one fear, as you guys know, um, it's being in front of people. It's, it's because that's like a public speaking, it's public performance. And there are people that are household names. I can't say exactly who at this point, but it's a known fact that some of them, before they go on stage, like they, they're a mess. Mm. Like, and I and don't wouldn't like think stage that. performance. I'm fine speaking, public speaking is yeah. fine. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is fine. But even doing this behind the screen, if it was a performance, if you wanted me to do a skit or something, I can't do it. It's a completely different thing. Yeah. So I can't perform. I just have to be me. <laughs> I, I was in a play and I told you that I was in school in 2015. So I graduated in 2015. So this has been recent when I say when I was in school, they put me in a play because I took theater and I actually studied theater for two weeks in London, which is amazing. I love theater, but they put me on stage. And it, it, I ended up not being in the show because it was just terrible. I couldn't do it. You know, I was playing the part of like a mean woman. We were doing a World War II kind of a thing. And I was supposed to be like this mean school marm. And I was supposed to like scream at the kids. And the teacher is like, just scream at them like they're your kids. And I'm like, I don't scream at my kids. <laughs> so I'm like, I can't do this. And I did it. I ended up not doing but. Yeah, I think if you are a performer and you have that theater background, I can see how that would be really beneficial to you if you are a musical performer, because yeah, you know that you need to that. do things that connect with the audience and you need to maybe over exaggerate some of your movements. If you're playing to a crowd of 200,000 and you're just doing small movements, they don't see that and it doesn't translate to them. So I, I totally understand that. And we have Emma. Emma's name is Cindy. On my screen, so. Oh right, because her mother Cindy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that I'm, I'm not going to put her name up, but I'll drop Stephen down. I didn't want to just jump you, Stephen, without saying anything. Okay. But no, we're Stephen good. In the lobby, <laughs> and bring up Emma. <laughs> okay, there she is. Hi, Emma. <laughs> hey, Emma Marie. Hey. So Emma, nice how has you. working with Vincent helped you? What has that been like? Um, it's been really, really cool um, to work with Vincent. Um, and it's really cool because in the beginning, he got me um, some really, really cool opportunities and he still does. And so um, it's really cool. I um, was able to get on radio shows with him. And that was a really cool experience for me because I had never been on radio before. So it was cool to be able to um, do that with him, and um, yeah, and he's also helped me to become more comfortable with um, speaking on stage and speaking in general, <laughs> um, and better at interviews and stuff like that. So yeah, it's been it's been a really cool experience to work with Vincent. Now, it is different to get on stage and sing and perform than it is to do an interview or to talk. Oh, yeah. I, can, I can talk all day long, but I can't sing at all. So you don't want me on stage singing. <laughs> but, you know, you think if someone is an actor or a performer of any kind that they would be comfortable doing interviews or just talking to people. And it's really not the same thing. Oh, the fucking bathroom. <laughs> that is my yes. husband. That I have Jeez. a young child on the screen now. Sorry. So he apologizes. <laughs> You see, you should have kept Stephen in and dropped me down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is this is live. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> I, di I didn't expect to have to censor my house, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything okay there, Tina? There's some frustration going on there. He said if it makes you feel any better, he got killed. So he, that's why. He did what? He got, he's playing a video game. So... <laughs> And he has headphones on, so he doesn't realize he's really loud. <laughs> I see. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. That's much better. <laughs> so. That's pretty darn funny. That's pretty funny. <laughs> you know, it is. It's live. I mean, it's, it's uh, and I think Emma has, um, you know, I really have to give Emma a lot of credit, um, and certainly Cindy and the family dynamic that they have. Um, because they really work hard at this. I mean, 
Emma has done numerous things live, live, just putting herself out there. Um, she had numerous shows and worked at theater. Um, my goodness, when she did Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz and she sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow, I mean, the whole place was just, I think, a mess after that. Because we were like, what did we just hear? That was absolutely phenomenal. That's amazing. Um, so having, having family support is really important if you're a young performer especially it still holds true even if you're an adult trying to make a living doing this it's not easy and there's always critics no matter how good you are so how important is it to have your mom there and have that family support it's really important it's really cool to have that because not everyone has that and so it's just really neat because you know um they take me to all my gigs because obviously i can't drive in <laughs> Um, and it's just, it's really cool to have that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that her mom, Cindy, recognized her talent because Cindy is a music teacher. And so early on, how, Emma, when did Cindy first, you, you tell that story of when she recognized, how old were you at that point? Um, well, I guess so she's a music teacher, you know, and so she goes, I would always go to her music classes and stuff. Um, and um, I would be singing along and all that stuff. But then when I took my first guitar lesson, I came home and um, I was nine and I came home and I just learned my first four chords and I was like, oh, I want to write a song. And um, so we wrote a song together and basically I was nine and, you know, it all started. So. Yeah, that was right before I met you then. That was right mm -hmm. before I met you. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it's, really cool. You have an edge um, on your competition when you can write music as well as perform because not everyone who can sing yes. can write music. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. I enjoy, I love writing my music. I love, um, I've been writing a lot on piano really well. And so it's cool to, you know, branch out into different instruments as well. So. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's interesting because we brought up earlier in the broadcast, Joe Cocker. Um, Joe is not a songwriter. Mm -hmm. um, Elton John does not write his own songs. Yeah. Um, but having great songs is where it all starts. Yeah. Um, and in Emma's case, she's, you know, she's got great songs. I mean, and they're getting better all the time. They started out great. Like your first song was Fly, right? Oh, was your God, yeah. <laughs> and you see, you look back at that now. I, I personally, I, I still think it's a great song, but you look back at that as an artist and you're like, oh, yeah, you kind of like roll your eyes about your own song. But that <laughs> that's exactly what it takes to be an artist, to be in a supportive environment through your family and, you know, other musicians, which is another reason why I love connecting musicians, because it's a support system. Yeah. Musicians are different. Like they need that. And there are critics out there. And so, Emma, for you to meet, you know, to have Jackie and Kiana as two of your best friends, I mean, how cool is that? You understand? So I think that's that's a big that's a big deal. Oh, is he still? Yeah, you kind of froze a little bit, and it was really funny. <laughs> oh, did I freeze? Oh, I didn't know I froze. I'm sitting here. I don't know that I froze. Like, yeah. if I go. <laughs> then I know I froze, but um, <laughs> I, I, just saying the fact that they have that support system um, is hugely important. And that's another reason why I like mm -hmm. to connect musicians is that they can now Emma, you know, introduced me to Jackie and Kiana and their family, which is a huge deal for me, you know, so thank you for that. Um, yeah. so, you know, I think we all help each other out. I think yeah. that's what it comes to. I think that's one thing that live is really great for is building community. It gives you an opportunity to connect with people who have the same interests that you have who may not be geographically yeah. close to you. Right. It's really cool, too, because I get to do um, – I'm doing stuff with uh, Kiana and Jackie. We're in um, Little Mermaid, actually, right now. My mom's directing it. And, um, yeah, that's really fun. I'm Ursula, which is really fun, and Jackie's, uh, Jackie's Ariel, and Kiana is a my sister. But that's going to be really fun because it's really, really cool because we all – we love theater as well, all of us. And so it's a neat way because, you know, we love doing um, performing and stuff together, but we also love doing theater together. And it's really neat experience to do that. And, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm not hearing you. Are you here? 
Is it just I, me? Yeah, I, I muted myself just so that there wouldn't be any no background noise while she was talking. And then I didn't unmute myself. <laughs> I was going to say is I noticed that, um, you know, that, Hi, Robert. that Emma, you have a Facebook page for your music. Yes. And that, so I'm assuming that you're using that and probably live. I know you're doing live because I've seen you live <laughs> as, as a way, not only to connect and build community, but to connect with your fans, which is a huge part of what you do. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, it's really cool to connect with fans. Um, and it's really cool to um, be able, I guess, to communicate with them and hear, you know, their thoughts. And it's just, it's a really neat experience. Have you had any fans ask to do duets with you yet? Um, I don't think so. Well, okay, yeah, I guess I have. <laughs> um, yeah, there. Oh, I guess there's a request on Instagram right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. No, I have. I have grandchildren, and they all love musically. Yeah. And, and yeah, and so they like to do the duet thing on musically. And so I was wondering if anyone had done that with you, if you put music on musically or or if you're not doing that. I haven't done um I haven't done any duets with anyone. I have a personal musically. I don't have a musical one, but yeah. Musical music. <laughs> Yeah, Lucy, uh, Emma's got this really cool thing on going with Lucy Gowan where they just put out their sixth song together. Was it our sixth? That's crazy. Yeah, and Lucy's in London, so they're 5,000 miles apart, and they they have met in person. I, I'm sure they're they're itching to get back in person again one of these days. Definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. That was really cool. And I'm, it's really cool to do that with Lucy um, because, you know, we're the same age, and it's um, – yeah, it's really cool to branch out, and it's really cool to meet um, her on Little Big Shots because that was it was such a neat experience, and we weren't expecting to meet so soon. And then um, we said to audition for it, and we were just like, "Oh my gosh, we're actually going to meet! Like, this is really amazing." Um, so yeah, it was just a really, really neat experience. So, so I have someone asking your age. Yeah. Oh, um, I am thirteen. So Robert has a daughter that's 11 and she likes to sing and she gets on live with him and sometimes alone and sings and performs. And she's, oh, that's awesome. uh, so she's Robert, she's, where do you guys live, Robert? They're in New Jersey, I think. Oh, wow. That's cool. New Jersey. I'm wondering if she's involved in little kids rock. That's an organization that um, the headquarters is in um, New Jersey. Oh, and, uh, I'm not sure. National. I know she does some musical, you know, related music related activities. And I think she may be in choir and some other things, so, but I'm not sure about, about that. I'm sure if Robert's listening, he'll answer that question. Yeah. So what's the coolest like place you've got to travel for your music? London. Yeah. London? Yeah, London yeah. was amazing. Yes. Um, yeah. It was beautiful and it was, yeah, it was gorgeous over there, and it was really neat to see all the historical um, places, and yeah, and then obviously meet Lucy, but <laughs> it was, yeah, it would yes. have. That's my favorite place I've ever visited as well, so I spent two weeks there studying theater, and I loved it too. I would move over there in a heartbeat if I could, but oh, yeah. yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> over there, <laughs> I love it. I so how is, I don't know how much time you got to spend there, or or even, I'm sure you've mentioned it, but I don't even know where you're located now, but what is the, is the music scene very different? Um, or did you not get to spend enough time to explore that? <laughs> like from here in Colorado, from London? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was, I mean, it was totally, I mean, I really didn't get to spend much time looking at all that because I was, you know, in the studio um, on the TV show. I was in the studio most of the time. So, um, but me and Lucy did busk um, one time um, on the streets. That was actually really cool. It was my first time busking, and I was always yeah. nervous <laughs> for busking. I don't know. I it just I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah. So I mean, I didn't really get to spend much time looking at that. I guess, right. but. Um, from what I saw, it wasn't that different. <laughs> it really whet your appetite to go back, I think. Yeah, definitely. Want to go back so bad. And we need to get Lucy here 
Um, yeah, because that'd be really cool to see her again and then get her over here. Who's she? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it really would. It really would. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the one time that Emma's traveled outside of um, the country for, for your music. Mm -hmm. Definitely, but yeah. it, it was such a cool experience. I loved it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I'm tempted to have you sing a little bit. I don't know if you'd want to sing a few lines. I mean, people are hearing you talk. I don't know how you feel about that. Uh -huh. your, mic's, your mic's pretty good. I think it would come through pretty well. I mean, it's just, if I may preface, when I met Emma, I think we're not sure if you were nine or 10. It was shortly after you yeah. were getting into music. It was like and I, yeah. when I heard her sing, I was it was kind of astonishing that she was that age. And what's really gratifying is to... Um, to hear her now. I mean, literally every gig, there's more just because you're getting, you know, you're growing. Um, there's more, even more dynamics and more depth to the voice. And um, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, people, Emma's somewhat small in stature. Um, <laughs> but she's like uh, just this gigantic sound that comes out of her when she performs. And your guitar shops are fantastic, really great really really great she's got a great guitar teacher um maybe more than one at this point i'm not sure and um songs are very meaningful um would you want to sing a few yeah. lines yeah um my mom is grabbing my cable real fast yeah. oh and you're gonna play guitar too yeah oh wow okay yeah. and just so you know sometimes in live stream the dynamic range isn't quite there on the instrumentation but yeah. i've noticed that it's weird that's why I was thinking you might just want to acapella just, something. I, because I, I, yeah, I think that because we had we did a thing with Clarissa the other day, and um, she was playing guitar and it sounded limited. Let's just put it that way, as far as what was coming through the the microphone. But I thought if you wanted to sing a few lines, we could at least yeah. hear you. Um, I'll sing a little bit of. I'll do the chorus of Rolling in the Deep. The what? I'm sorry. The chorus of rolling. Yeah. Well, okay. Um. We'll see. I'll do. I'll sing a little bit of "Don't Know Why" by Nora Jones. <laughs> okay. Um. Waited till I saw the sun. I don't know why I didn't come. Left you by the house phone. I don't know why I didn't come. I don't know why I didn't come. When I saw the break of day, I wish that I could fly away. Stayed a million in the sand, catching teardrops in my head. Bravo. Very nice. Thank you. Sounded yes. great. Thank you. I'm always amazed at just the depth and the maturity that you hear in young voices. I can't, like, I literally can't sing at all. I'm terrible. My husband makes fun of me because he, <laughs> he has a music background. He doesn't sing, but he plays instruments and he recognizes, you know, voices and talents and and so he makes fun of me. I know that I can't sing at all, but, you know, I've got some family members that have nice voices, but they just don't have, I don't know, I'm not a music person, so I don't know how to explain it. But to me, it's just not that depth that kind of gives you yeah, chills. It's not full and rich, I guess. Yeah, that that's a good way to say it. And yours is, you have a beautiful voice. Thank you. And, so just keep doing what you're doing. I think, you know, one of the beautiful things about being a songwriter, a singer, and a musician is you really have three career paths if you need to choose between right. one or if you can't do singing for some reason, then you all, you'll have other options in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And I'm, I'm happy that your mom is so involved because for me as a parent, that's a scary industry. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Does Cindy well, want to pop in the screen at all and say hi? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> she doesn't want. We don't ever want to pop on the screen unless we can give an advance notice. <laughs> hi, Cindy. <laughs> I'm 
Okay, well, I'm going to say thank you to Emma for joining us. And please yeah. tell people, in case they missed you in the comments below, how they can find you. Um, I am on basically all social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. My website is emmamariemusic.net. And, um, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing what you do and sharing your voice with us. I appreciate it. Thank you Thank for having you. me. Awesome. Thanks, Emma. Awesome. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So I'm going Talk to soon. bring Stephen back in. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, yes. Yeah, there we go. Look, no. <laughs>